Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami Zvachem Daf Lamedal. We begin 12 lines off the top. Gufa, let's go back and review the halacha that we learned yesterday. So we have a person who is tummy, is impure. Sha'achal basar kodesh. He ate carbon material. He ate uh, basar from a carbon. Lefnei zrika. Okay, so it's still before the zrika of that carbon. So the carbon flesh is as yet unprocessed. It's still before the zrika. So if he goes and eats that basar, what happens? Rishlagash Amar like it. According to Rishlakish, he's liable to Malkus. Because just, uh, just because it's before Zrika doesn't mean that he's not liable to Malkus. And we had a Pasuk for that yesterday. Rabbi Yechon Amar Rabbi disagrees. He says, yeah, if it's fully processed, if the Hakrava process had completed, right, the Zrika had been accomplished. In which case, the Basar is now suitable for consumption by a person who's suitable, person who's tahar. So on the flip side, if it's going to be eaten by a person who's tamay, then, you know, there is an einish. But before Zerika, when it is as yet unconsumable, it's not meant for achil. Right? The Pesach says, a tar should eat, but not a tamay. Something which is meant for a tahar. But this is not really meant for consumption yet. It's still premature. Early in the process, in which case there's no malchus, even if a tummy eats it. Rabbi Yechon Amar Enelik, Amar Abaye, says Abaye, let me explain to you the context of the machlekes. Who's tummy, the person or the actual bosser? Machlekes. This machlekes meaning Rabbi Yechon who says that there's no malchus in this case. It's limited betumas haguf to a case where the person is tummy. Avol betumas bosser. But if the basar itself should be tamay, divrei hakoy loike all agree. Even Rabbi Yechon agrees. If a regular person eats that basar, which is tamay, he gets malchus, even though it's before zrika. Why? The Amar. The Amar Mar, because we have this halacha that we know, based on the pasuk vahabasar. So the pasuk reads like this: vahabasar asher yigam b'chol tamay loyi achil. Basar of Kaidish, which is Tami, should not be eaten, should be burnt. Then we have a repetition within that same Pasuk. Veha Basar and the flesh and the meat, called Tahar Yechal Basar. So we learn from here that even, even pieces of wood, the Basar is Larabis, to include even Eitzim Lavaina. Wood. Lavaina. Incense, these things, uh, you know, of, of the Beis Hamidosh, these carbon materials, which had become Tamei, if one eats them, he gets Malchus. Despite the fact that they're not really edible. Not really. Candidates for consumption, for personal consumption, for sure, right? Even though they're not really edible, Afafiluch and still... We find that Rabbi Nukro, the Torah, adds them to the list and includes them under this umbrella, under this liability. Apparently, says Abaye, that the issue is that they think itself is tummy. So if the basar is tummy, one may not eat it, even if it's before Zerika. Even though it's not really meant for consumption, it's not worse than wood chips or lavina, where there's an iser, despite them not really being edible. That's Abai's opinion. The Rav Amar Rav disagrees. He says, Machlekes betumas haguf. Just the opposite. This Machlekes, meaning, when Rish Lakish says there's Malkus for something before Zrika, that's only regarding personal Tumma. If he's Tumma, he may not eat Basar of Kodesh even before Zrika. But if the Basar itself is the issue, that in itself is Tumma, Divri HaKoyl Eine Like all agree. Even Rish Lakish agrees there's no Malkus. Why? Because we're speaking before Zerika. My time, why? Since we can't really apply the other part of the uh, 
The other element, the other component of this is Torah says if a person is tummy and he eats the regular basar kodesh, she gets kares. If the say Allah, if the tumma is upon the person and he eats it, there is kares. Okay, that's it. So since that's not really applicable, because that only applies when the basar is really ra'i la'achila. Torah says, when you tar, you eat the basar, meaning basar which is meant for consumption after zrika. If you're a tummy, you eat it, you get curries. Then the Pasuk speaks about also refraining from eating basar of, tum, of kaidish, which is tummy. So it's all within the same sort of package. There's a correlation. There's a matchup between all these cases. And if one doesn't apply, the other one doesn't apply. So again, since we can't not apply it in this type of case, in the case where the basar is still before Zerika, we can't apply the Isra of, well, if you're a tummy, you shouldn't eat it, otherwise you get curry. It doesn't apply there. It only applies to food which is, which is meant to be eaten. So on the flip side, we can't either apply the other element, the prohibition against refraining from something which in itself is tummy. We don't apply to it as well. The pasuk v'habasar asher yigal b'chol tamei lo yachel that if the basar is tamei keep away that wouldn't apply if the basar is before zrika. Asks the gemara, what do you mean? What we just said that applies to even wood incense which are not meant for consumption. How could we rule out and exclude meat which is still before zrika? V'amar mar we learned v'habasar the word v'habasar is the rabbis to cover all these cases. Eitzim lavoina. The answer is hacha b'mayaskina the wood that you're speaking about. It's fully processed. It is fully processed. You know, Chikitsu Bukli, Rashi explains, it had been inserted into a Kli Sharis. Rashi says it was on the Mizbeach, it was part of the fire arrangement. And the uh, Kayin took a Kli Sharis, scooped up some of the coals, together with those wood chips. So they were actually inserted into a holy vessel. So that's considered processed. It's like you know, it's like a carbon after zrika. The nasa kimishu karvok matirim. It's as though all the matirim, typically a reference to all the processes regarding the blood, the kabbalah, the lochas zrika, which process the carbon, enable it for consumption, enable it for hakrava. So likewise, these wood chips, which had been inserted into klisharis, that's the end of their uh, journey. They become sanctified and. It says, oh, they're fully processed as a carbon, in which case, they're like any other carbon. And if they should become tummy and one eats them, there's malchus. We don't consider it like before Zrika. We don't consider it like it's inedible. Yeah, it's physically inedible, but it's a fully processed carbon. And that's all, that's all that counts. The Nasa Kimisha Karbo Kamatira. And we know, this not, and we know that that's so, that's something which enters a cliche race. It's considered fully processed, this not, kol, shiesh le matirin. A standard carbon which has matirin, which basically means most of your carbonis where the processing of the blood, the avoid of the dam, is matter the carbon. So, in that type of case, the current liability for a tummy eating that material is only Mishakar of Matirov, only once Matirov were processed. But, called She'ela Matirov, a carbon which does not have the Matirov element to it, Like, um, you know, some menachas don't have a kmitza. Typically, you take a kmitza, you put it on the mizbeach, and that's mata the rest. Sometimes it's just totally on the mizbeach directly. So there are no, there's no double phase. There's no two, no two stages. No matirim which enable the rest. It's just a single unit type of carbon. Likewise, in the case of the wood, So then the chorus kicks in. 
when the um, the items were sanctified in a kli. Likewise, the wood in this machta and this shovel, which is a kli shavis. Okay, so in summation, Rosh Lakish says, if a tummy eats basar before zrika, there's malchus. Rabbi says there's no malchus. We have Abai's explanation, Rabbi's explanation. Abai explains. That's only pertaining to personal tumor. But regarding the actual basar, if that in itself is tummy, there's malchus even before zrika, because no worse than the uh, wood, eats malavina, which is not really edible, and there's still malchus. Rabbi disagrees. He says, ah, wood, that's a whole different story. That wasn't a klisharis. It was, you know, process was done on that and completed. Um, just the opposite, he says. He says, if the basar is tummy, and it's before Zerika, all agree there's no malchus, because it's not fully processed. It's only a question of tumas aguf. If a person is tummy, eats basar kodesh, which is tar, Rabbi Echon says, no malchus, which like says there is. Itma, now we shift to a different discussion. Again, Machlekes, between these same opinions, Rabbi Yechon and Rish Itma ha-mala ivori be'matmeya. Al gabe mezbech, if one should decide to serve parts of a non-kosher animal, on the mezbech, Rish Lakish Amar, he says there's malchus, loike, Rabbi Yechon Amar, ain't no like there's no malchus. Why? Rish Lakish Amar, loike, Rish Lakish says there's malchus. To hear in, Tmei the Pasuk says, right, in the beginning of Ayikra, bring the carbonis from Menah Bokor, Menah Tsoin, Takrivu, specifically kosher animals. Tahira in, yeah, that's acceptable. Tmei Eloi, non-kosher, are unacceptable. So it's a negative commandment, which is inferred from a positive commandment. Is there a malchus on that? It's not an explicit negative, it's inferred. Velav, a negative. Haba, which is inferred. Mechlal Seif, from a positive, such as, bring only kosher, but not non-kosher. Like and all of this malchus apply to that. Rabbi Rabbi Yechon Amar, any like and all of this no malchus. Although you shouldn't be doing it, but since it's not an uh, explicit love, there's no malchus generated. Love Abba Machal Asay, any like and all of a love which is drawn from an Asay generates no malchus. Only if it's an expressive, ex- explicit love. Mesiv Rabbi Yirmiyah says Rabbi Yirmiyah have a kasha. On Rish Lakish, who says that even a love by inference generates malchus. We have the Pasuk regarding foods which are meant to be consumed, kosher foods, Pasha Shmini, right? Only the animals which have the split hooves, chew their cud, or you saw techel, that should be eaten. That, but nothing else. Vilebi but not a non kosher animal. So, in a way, it's an, it's an inference. Vilav, haba machlala say. And what status does it have? It has a status of merely an assay. It doesn't generate, generate malchus. In fact, Rashi brings, and that's why we need a, a, a special pasuk, a special laugh against eating non kosher, because this wouldn't uh, suffice. It's only an inference. That's a kashan rosh lakish. Amalei Rabbi Yaakov, so Rabbi Yaakov turned to Rabbi Yerma Batachlifa. He says, Azbul, let me explain it to you. Actually, the uh, discussion between Shlach and Rabbi Yechnan pertained to a totally different topic. Let me explain to you. With respect to non-kosher animals on the Mizbech, the Kuli Amulei Pligi, all agree. It's only considered an assay, and there's no Malkus. Ki Pligi, the Machlekes is as follows. Bechaya, totally different topic. If one chooses to bring a Chaya, more of a, you know, undomesticated, Kosher animal, a wild beast, a deer. Vachi Itmar and the Machlekes was as follows. We switch around the opinion, the, the, the names actually. Rabbi Echon Omar Oiver Baaseh, he says, you do get a violation. You violated a mitzvah Haseh. Torah says, only Min Habakar, Min Atzoin, cattle, sheep, but not uh, something called Echaya. There's no Isra at all. In fact, Rashi says, it's okay if one decides to bring a deer on the Mizbeach. It's not preferred like a behema, but uh, it's second best. Explains the Gemara. Rabbi Yechnamar Eber Be'asei, he has violated an assay because the Torah speaks about behema, only behema, behema, and only that's acceptable. Chayel, but not a chayel. Rishlagosh Amar, ain't no Eber Be'asei, no, there's not a violation at all. He hasn't violated anything. Ha'hu, although the Torah does specify behema and, and bakar, le mitzvah, in terms of preference. But a chaya also works. Ask the Gemara. Mesiv Rav. He has a kasha. 
on Rish Lakish, who says that even a Chaya, a Chaya works. We have a, uh, a Bryce as follows. Il Nemar, Karban Lashem Behema. Had the Torah only said, bring a Karban for Hashem, Behema, general category, without specifying cattle and sheep. Hayesh, I would say, look, generally, even a Chaya can be labeled Behema. Behema is sort of the uh, you know, umbrella category covering Behema is and Chayas. Hayesh, I would say, chay, even a Chaya Bechal Behema can be included in the term Behema and is acceptable for, as a Karban. Kiddush and as we find in Dvarim, when the Torah presents a list of behemoths, then comes along and gives us some chayas as well. Apparently, it's anonymous. The following animals can be eaten. Shor, it's an ox. Sex of him. Meseizim. Ayol, utzvibi yachmer. Those last, ayol, uh, yachmer. Those are chayas. Apparently, a chaya can be labeled behemoth. So perhaps it's acceptable as a carbon as well. Tom Lamer comes to the Pesach and says, no. Let me specify which behemoth. Specifically, bakar vatsoin. Cattle and sheep. Bakar vatsoin, amartach, that I allow you. Okay, perhaps it's only a preference thing, right? Perhaps the point is, preferably don't bring the uh, the chaya. But if you brought it, it's okay, it's kosher. Holy Mazadayma, comparable to the following parable, a Tamach Omli Rabbi, like a student who was instructed by his teacher. Please bring me some wheat. Maybe he brought him a bonus. Wheat and barley. Okay. It's not violating, it's not going against. Elamais Aldari, just adding. So perhaps here as well, Tara says, you know, Behema, Bakar Ratzayin, that's preferred, but if you bring a Chai, okay, you've, uh, you know, you've added. Because, and still okay, Talmud Leimar comes to the and says, no, Bakar Ratzayin. I'm specifying that type, nothing else. Bakar Ratzayin, Amarti Lecho, Vali Chai, I allow you that, not a Chai. Holomaz Adayim, so what's that comparable to on the above? Parable. The Rabbi, like the Talmud was instructed by his Rabbi, Al Tavili Elochitim. Bring me only wheat, wheat only. Maybe the Chitim certainly brings him wheat and barley. Thanks, but no thanks, right? Sheinik Kemoisiv Al Dvarav. It's not like he added; rather, he went against his words. El Kemav Al Dvarav. Likewise, over here, Upasul. If you bring a Chayot, it's Pasul. So that's a Tuyufta. The Rish Lakish Tuyufta. It's a refutation on Rish Lakish, who says even a Chay is acceptable. The Kulon Shekibul. So in the mission we learn, all those individuals who are typically not meant to be involved in Akrava, Ave Karban, Azar, etc. If they do Kabbalah, unauthorized Kabbalah, if you can quickly salvage some, uh, go back to the animal, salvage some uh, Dam HaNefesh, some lifeblood, you can redo it. So even if they did the Kabbalah with improper you know, thoughts of Chutz Lezman, Chutz Lamkaim, it can be redone. Rashi explains because um, what they did is not really valid. Comes to Rishlakish and asks Rabbi Yechon a question. So we have a person who's not really qualified to do Avod. He's a Pasul. He did Kabbalah, but he didn't stop there. He went and did Zrika. That far. What's we'll the now? Typically, after Zrika, the rest of the blood is called Shirayim, leftovers, and it is poured to the base of the Mizbeach and trickles through the drain, etc. It's no longer suitable for Zrika, it's Shirayim, it's leftovers. But here, who did the Zrika? Not a kosher person, a pasal. So, can I go back to the neck of the animal and extract some more blood and try again? Or perhaps it's too late. Once the, uh, the apostle did the Zrika, anything left over is called Shirayim. Shirayim is not suitable for Zrika. Amalek says, why is it Shirayim? Ain oise Shirayim. The only time an invalid, a problematic Zrika generates Shirayim on the rest. Ela chutz lezmani v'chazim And that's only when a uh, proper kain did Zrika but he uh, inserted an improper thought, even though there's some problematic aspect to the Zrika. But Zrika is a Zrika. It's considered like a valid Zrika, close enough to a valid Zrika. Since, in a way, it did accomplish something. It made people. Sort of a 
positive negative, <laughs> right? It generated a perverted carbon. So that's it. Process is over. You can't redo it. The rest is Shirayim. But if the uh, Zerika was done by a person who shouldn't be, had no business doing that. No, no business doing Avoida. So what he does is totally null, null and void and go back and redo it. Rav Zvid Masnihach. Rav Zvid had a different version of this uh, question. Boy, when I Lakish, he asked with Rabbi Yechon, Kois Pasel, Mau, Shiasa Shirayim. Okay, let's say they collected the blood in two containers. Uh, uh, one, one container. Okay, and now that blood was taken out of the Beis Hamidish. So the content becomes puzzle. It's called Yaitse. And uh, a coin went and applied that blood on the Mizbech. Shouldn't have, but he did. Same question. What happens to the rest of the blood in the animal? Can I go and extract some more blood and redo it? Or should we say, no, it's been labeled Shirai, leftovers. That's it. It's rejected. Amalei, he says. Rebekhan responds. Well, Puzzle Gufa, my, my Svirloch. You fo- you're focusing on where the material becomes possible. What, a- what about a case where the, the person who did the Zerika was possible? You're not asking about that case, right? What do you think? Well, what's your opinion on that? So really, it's, it's one and the same thing. Whatever verdict you issue there will apply here as well. If the person who's possible does Zerika, it generates Shirayim on the rest. Well, Kais possible, Nami Mashi Shirayim. The same would happen with the container containing invalid blood. The apostle in Masha Shirayim. On the other end, if the person who is unauthorized does his rika, well, it doesn't generate Shirayim because what he does is null and void. Well, the same will apply to this case as well, where the material is unsuitable. Kais apostle nami loy Masha Shirayim. Rav Yerim with different Masni Hachi. He had a different uh, version of a question that was presented between Abaye and Rabba. Boy mine Abaye me Rabba. So now we shift to a carbon chatas. Kois mau shiasas chaveroi dochui. So by a chatas, they must apply the blood four times to the mezbeach, you know, all four corners. So he collected the blood in two containers, enough to go around. He decided to only use the content of one kois. Okay, he applied, or he applied all four matanis from one case. Now you have another container full of blood, unused. What's the status of that container? Shall we say it's like Shirayim, and Shirayim gets poured to the base of the Mizbech. Or shall we say it's worse, it's Dachit, it's been rejected from service. In which case it just is poured down the regular drain. It's not part of the Akrova process. Which way? The usage of one container at the exclusion of the other one. Does that turn the other one into dachi, rejected? Or, or perhaps no, it's called shirayim, leftovers, in which case it belongs on the base of the Mizbech, or Malay. So he said, actually, it's a good question. It's a machleg, it's tanoim. Plug the brother of Shimon, Rabbanon, the Sanya, as we find in the Brice, Lamala. Upstairs, we have the uh, Psukim above, speaking about one type of uh, chatos. Huaymer, it says, Vez dama yishbech, take the blood and pour it. to the base of the Mizbech, you know, leftovers get poured into the uh, you know, drain on the bottom of the Mizbech. Lamata, further down, by the other carbon chattas, it uses similar language, but a little different. Weimar says, this kol all the blood should be spilled. What does the Pasuk mean? It means like this. Menayin l'chattas shekibo dome ba'arba koises. A situation where he decided to collect the blood of the chattas in four separate containers. V'nasa matana achas mizeh. He did one application from this cu- cup, Umatana Achas Mizeh, one application from the other container. So all four were somewhat used. All four leftovers are called leftovers. Shekulon, Nishbachan, Yisoyed, that uh, allows us to pour all the leftovers to the Yisoyed, like, uh, like regular Shirayim. Because all four containers has, had been used somewhat in the, uh, in the uh, you know, Zerika process, in the Azor process. How do we know that's true? Tamalayim Aves called on Yishbech, all the blood. Is meant to be poured on the east side because they were all uh, used. Yachal, what, what about a case where Nosan Arba Matonis, Mikois Echot, he decided to use only one container for all four applications? You cool on the east side, so perhaps in this case as well, the rest of the blood, all the other containers 
belong in the Yesod as Shirayim? Tamalayim or no, Be'ez Dami, only this blood. It's a limiting, exclusionary term. Right? Only some blood is considered Shirayim, the rest is not. The rest has been rejected. Haketa, how do we go about this? Who the leftovers of the container that was used, Nishpach Yesod goes to the Yesod like Shirayim Vehem, but the rest of the blood of the other containers, Nishpach La'ama, is poured into the, uh, you know, the uh, drain system running through the Azara. It's not considered Shirai. That's the sheet of the Rabbanon. So when something was sort of ignored, it's been rejected, it's Dachli. Rabbi Lezbah Shimon Oymer, he disagrees. He says, all this leftover blood is called Shirai. Even in the case where he ignored the other containers. What about a case where he, he collected the blood in four separate containers? He applied all four applications from just one container and ignored the rest. Even in this case, all the blood is poured to the aside like Shirayim, Tamalayim, Abes, Koldam, Ayishpaich, Koldam includes all this blood as well. Okay, so there's your answer. Right? As per your question, what happens to the second container that was ignored? Well, according to Rabbanan, to the Amma, to the Shimon, it's called Shiraim, goes to the Yisrael. Now, further on, uh, Rabbi Shimon's Shita, he says everything is uh, called Shiraim. What about that other Pasuk which said, as Damai, a limiting, uh, you know, a Pasuk? Which sounds like it's limiting to only some blood. That's coming to uh, exclude the leftover blood in the back of the neck of the animal. Which was never collected in a cleat, certainly that's not called Shirayim. That blood just goes into the regular drain system. Okay, so let's just recap. What if a, a, a person who's puzzled does Rika? Can I go back and find some more blood? Or is it called Shirayim and it's too late? Morris says it's not Shirayim. Got another version of this discussion. What if the uh, blood in the container itself became puzzle and somebody did zrika? What happened to the rest of the blood? Is it called shirayim or not? And he said basically, the two, connect, the, the two questions are really interconnected. And had a, we had a question regarding two containers. We decided not to use the other one. Does it still have a status of shirayim? Okay, the mission we had, Kibbala Kosh, of Nasal Apostle, the qualified coin. Did the Kabbalah and decided to, you know, pass it on to a person who's not really qualified. What do we do now? Is it done or can it be rectified? Yeah, just give it back to the Kasher and continue. Another example was he did the Kabbalah with his right hand as appropriate. Then he passed it on to his left hand. Just put it back to the right. Third case was he was Makabalah in a Kli Kodesh and pour the blood into a Kli Choyl. Just pour it back and you're good. Now, it's all pretty much running on the same track here that you can just. Uh, redo, rectify a temporary, you know, uh, hitch. So why express this halacha in all different ways? What's the point of this repetition? All three cases have a something distinct to them, and there's a lesson embedded in each case. The Yashmin apostle. If we only discuss the case where he passed it to a person who's apostle, I mean, I would say my apostle. You know what kind of apostle we're speaking about? Not any apostle. It's specific to a tummy, a coin who's impure, who really has some say in the matter. He's really suitable somewhat to serve in Beis HaMikdash. When? When the entire community is, is Tameh, right? We say Tumah is allowed when the, you know, the Tzibur is Tameh. So since he has some sort of connection to service, giving it to him doesn't disqualify the blood. The Chazlov is Tzibur. Avasmo, but in the case where he passed it to his left hand, which is totally out of whack. Loy. Perhaps in this case, it's unrectifiable. On the other hand, Vyashmina Smoil, had we only discussed the case of Smoil that could be rectified, the Islaik Sherbi Amikipurim, because we find in some context that left is suitable for service. Anyam Kippur, when he would carry the, um, uh, you know, the um, container with the uh, incense, and his left hand he has to hold something as well because he's overloaded. So we see that left sometimes can do service. No. So here as well, it doesn't, uh, you know, disqualify. But if he puts it into a mundane kli, which has no, uh, no business being there, perhaps in that case, the dam becomes puzzle. So that's why we present it in all different, you know, uh, ways that uh, they can all be rectified. On the other hand, on the other hand, if we only discuss the case of the blood which was poured into a kli 
I would say that doesn't do harm, Mishum the Chazal to Shinu, because after all, you can theoretically be Makadish the Klichel, so it has potential to serve. Aval Hanak, on the other deficiency, left hand or the Tommy, Emily, perhaps, once you give it to them, it's over. Tzricham, that's why we discuss all three cases, they're all rectifiable. Ask the Gemara, why? How can you rectify it? During, you know, when the blood was passed, and, you know, to the wrong person, to the wrong hand, let that blood become dachi, reject it. Because once it loses its, it gets sort of deactivated for the time being, that should have a permanent uh, effect on the blood. There's a concept called dachi. Once it becomes rejected and unsuitable, it should stay that way permanently. Amalei Ravina Ravashi. Hachi Amar. The following was explained by Rav Yirmi Medifti in the name of Mishmei the Rav. Hamani. Who's speaking in the Mishnah? Chana Hamitzri. Chana Hamitzri. It's his opinion. The less like the Chuyin. He doesn't hold up the Chuyin. If something becomes, you know, disqualified for the time being, okay, wait it out and bring it back. It doesn't get that permanent rejection. The Sani, as we find, this is on Yom Kippur when they had the, you know, the pair of goats. One was the Chatos Lashem. One was sent out to the uh, Midbar Azazel, thrown down the mountain. So it's, it's meant to be a pair, right? The pair is like, you know, one unit. You can't have one without the other. So what happens if something goes wrong with one, uh, you know, on the pair? Does the other one become puzzle or not? Even if the blood of the chatas is already in the container and the, the other animal disappeared, he died, not to worry, just bring, find another one to take his place. Maybe Chavir or Mizavagli, bring another one to make up for the lost one, for the, uh, you know, and pair him up with the, uh, the Chathas. So the Chathas does not become disqualified just because he lost his partner. We don't say Dachi. Likewise in our Mishnah. Ravashi, Yom Ravashi says, you know what, even if we go with the opinion that Dachi is a concern, but here it won't be a concern. Kol Shabbat Yadu, because in our Mishnah, you can, read, you can fix it quickly. He can fix it. It's Biyadu. It's within his ability to put the blood back in his right hand, to pour it back in the Klik Kaidish, to take it back from the Apostle. Kol Shabbat in a situation which is fixable, which is within his control to correct, Loi have a does not get the status of dachi. Omar of Shaya, Kavan say that Rashi Mistavra. I'll even prove that this is true. Man Shamas like this like the because who's the opinion? Who's the Shita that holds up dachi? Rabida. It's none. Again, back to the story of the pair of goats and Yom Kippur. Vaoid and Rabida Rabida holds. Guess what? If something goes wrong, it becomes rejected. Nishbach Adam. So you have both animals here. And the blood of the Chata spilled out, making it unsuitable for Akrava. So what happens to his partner, the one that's meant to be sent to the, down the mountain? Yom You have to leave him, let him die. You can't use him anymore. He becomes rejected because he lost his partner. Likewise, Mesa Mishalech, the Mishalech died. Shef you have to spill out the blood of the Chathas. So clearly, he subscribes to the concept of Dachi. And still, still in all, we'll find a case that illustrates that even according to Rabbi Yehuda, when it's Biyadai, when it's, you know, in your ability to fix, Dichai doesn't, does not set in. V'shamile, we heard that Rebidah holds. Dhamma who says, Kol shabi yadi, when it's biyadi, le'ev adachi, dachi does not affect. The Snan, as we find in the Mishnah, this was an era of Pesach, when there was multitudes of Karbanis Pesach and the Azor, and inevitably some of the blood would spill out. Rebidah says, very simple solution. All the Karbanis are kosher. What do you mean? Some blood is on the floor. Rebidah, Imam. Koi se'echod, ha'yimamalei, they would take one container and gather the blood that was on the floor, sampling of all the blood, hoping that the spilled blood, some of it was in this thing, and then spritz it on the Mizbech. So he would fill some of the mix in the container. They would approach the Mizbech and do one spritz near the, the base properly. And that would rectify any... Uh, issue with any uh, spilled blood of any carbon Pesach. And the question is, what do you mean? While it's on the floor, it's unsuitable. Why doesn't Dachai kick in? Reject it. Unsuitable. Shema Mino, apparently. Kol Shabiyah, they love a Dachai. Shema Mino. When something is within your ability to fix, such as in this case, wait, we'll collect it, we'll pour it on his back. That prevents Dachai from kicking in. And the carbon is 
is kasha. Okay, let's just go a little, a little further. Gufa. Okay, so uh, again, the question was, we had three uh, cases in the Mishnah where something went wrong, but then was rectified. Passed to the left hand, passed to the apostle, passed to the klichayl. We rectified. Either because there's no dich or because it's biyadai that overrides any dich concerns. Gufa, so what did we learn? Tanya, bidaimer, kois echadim malim dam taravis, he would fill one container of this blood mix on the floor. Why? Just in case one of the carbonates' blood spilled out, so this act would rectify it. Really? If a blood spills directly from the animal to the floor and never was collected in a kli, that, car, that blood is unsuitable for, for Zerika. So why you uh, ask the Gemara, how do they know? How do they know to say that this is what happened? Eloshema, they're concerned that perhaps, learning this cover of a cleave, perhaps, the blood went straight from the animal to the floor. So, how can you be so sure that this will rectify every situation? It wouldn't rectify if it went straight from the animal to the floor. Amr Lansi says, You're right. I'm relying on the Kehanim's efficiency. I'm only suggesting election is of a cleave to collect blood which had been contained in a container and then spilled out. That's still suitable for Zerika. Who goofy maniada? So how did we themselves know that in fact that was the case? Perhaps they were right that it spilled directly on the floor. Kahanam's reason. Kahanam are known to be efficient, meticulous, conscientious. There's a garrison here. Well, uh, if they're efficient and they know, right? Typically they know that blood goes into the container, so we don't have to be concerned about the far chance of blood spilling directly on the floor. So then how did blood get spilled on the floor to begin with? So there's a garrison here. Right, if they're so zarus, how did the blood spill? They're so efficient. The answer is like this because there's such a hurry. For Avdan Haya doing it so quickly, imagine if you, if you read the stories, the accounts of the you know, multitudes, there were like thousands, even millions of people. It was, it was just right, it was overwhelming. The, the, the numbers, the multitudes, the amount of carbonates that were going on, it was supernatural, it was a miraculous situation. So, inevitably, something you know, you know, because of the uh, Intense speed, something got spilled out. The they would do it quickly. Mustap and the blood spill out out of the container. Now, Allah is once the blood was contained in a container and it spills out, it's okay for Zerika. Ask the Gemara of Allah Dama Tamsis Muravoy. Another question of Yudah. We know that only Dama Nefesh, the blood which supports the life of the animal, the main blood that spurts out right away, that's kosher for Zerika, but Dama Tamsis, blood which you know trickles out later, that's not uh, proper blood, that's not blood for Zerika. So, inevitably, on the floor, you'll have all kinds of bloods. And perhaps the kosher blood will be bottled, nullified, in this uh, huge volume of damatamsis, which is presumed to be in a majority of blood. That's there. Well, the damatamsis, Rabbi the follows his opinion. The Amr who says, damatamsis is curry dam. He also considers that blood to be considered blood, regarding all the halachis. The sun, yes, we learned that is Bazhara. We hold that the secondary blood is merely Bazhara. There's no curse for eating it. There's only a warning on Isr. We don't have a curse, there's curse as well. So he considers it bona fide blood. Really? But not regarding uh, Kapara and Zrika. Father of Allah says, Might there be the, we the Greeks learn the Kapara regarding atonement, Shainam a Chapra. You can't use that secondary blood for Kapara, Shinamar. Kadama Nefesh. Dam Shanavi, it's by only Dama Nefesh. Is considered dam for kapar kari dam, but not this secondary trickle. Shein dam nefesh yoitzabai blood, which does not relate to the nefesh. The nefesh doesn't leave the body when this blood trickles out, meaning it's unrelated to the life force of the animal. In kari dam, that's not called dam regarding hakrava. So back to the question: you have this little bit of dam nefesh overwhelmed by this huge volume of non-blood. El lo rabbi the tamir reader follows his opinion. The amr who says ain dam avatul dam. Blood and blood don't nullify each other, as she says. Min bimina le bottle, when it's the same type of material, they don't nullify each other. So even though there's so much more unsuitable dam in this uh, container now, doesn't matter. Because a little bit of proper blood maintains its, uh, its identity, keeps its ground, and when applied to the Mizbeach, you have uh, properly completed that specific carbon's process. Okay. All the best to you, and that's Lacharab.